Lesson 8.2c, Writing Fractions as Decimals and Percents. We can write some fractions as percents by writing an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. And this method is useful when the fraction has a denominator that is a factor or a multiple of 100. So the factors of 100 are 1 times 100, 2 times 50, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, or 10 times 10. And the multiples of 100 are 100, 200, 300, 400, you know, and so on, 5, 600, 700. So if we have 1 fourth, we can very easily just do the numerator and denominator times 25, because those are factors of 100 to write 25 hundredths or to write 25%. But if we have a fraction like 2 sevenths, 7 is not a factor of 100. So we're going to have to use long division. And I'll show you at the end of this lesson what happens with 2 sevenths, because it's a little special. If a fraction does not have a denominator that is a factor or multiple of 100, we can use long division. We have 3 eighths, so this is 3 divided by 8. We think of the fraction bar as divided by. We have 3 divided by 8. And 8, the denominator, is not a factor or multiple of 100. So to write this as a decimal or a percent, we need to use long division. Remember, the numerator goes inside the division house. And so our denominator is going to be on the outside as the divisor. And 8 cannot fit into 3, so we write a 0 in the quotient. And we need to keep dividing, so we add a decimal point, which goes straight up, right? Now we ask ourselves how many times 8 can fit into 30. That would be 3 times, because 8 times 3 is 24. We subtract and get a 6. We can bring another 0 down to keep dividing. 8 fits into 60 7 times, and 8 times 7 is 56. We subtract that and get a 4. We can bring another 0 down to keep dividing. 8 fits into 40 5 times, which gives us a remainder 0. We can say that 3 eighths as a decimal is 375 thousandths. And we can also say it's 37 and 5 tenths percent. We're going to move that decimal two places to the right and add a percentage sign. We'll talk about that more in a minute. It's telling us that 36 out of 200 students joined the school chess club. We have 36 out of 200. That's our fraction. And we can write 36 two hundredths as a decimal and a percent, we think. We need to give this fraction a denominator of 100, so we divide the numerator and denominator by 2. That'll give us 18 hundredths. Now we write it as the decimal equivalent, which would be 18 hundredths, like this. Now write the percent equivalent by moving the decimal point two place values, two jumps to the right, and inserting a percent symbol. Moving the decimal two place values to the right, those two jumps to the right, is the same as dividing by 100. We know 18% of the students joined the chess club. The 36 out of 200 students would be 18% of those students. In a sixth grade classroom, 7 eighths of the students have a pet. Write 7 eighths as a decimal and a percent. And we think, because 8 is not a factor or multiple, of 100, we need to use long division. So remember, the numerator goes inside the long division house. So we have 8 trying to fit into 7, and it can't. It fits in 0 times. We're going to have to add a decimal point and some zeros to keep dividing. And we do our division and see that 7 eighths is equal to 875 thousandths. Now we can write the percent equivalent by moving the decimal point two place values to the right, two jumps to the right, and inserting a percent symbol. We're going to have 87 and 5 tenths percent. We can also say it's 87 and a half percent. So if you remember from previous lessons, I said that we can have a decimal or fraction inside of a percentage. We know that 87 and 5 tenths percent of the class has a pet. At Bob's Pizza Parlor, two-tenths of the pizzas sold were small, 35% were medium, and eight-twentieths were large. Which size pizza did he sell the most? And we think, to compare these amounts, we need to write them in the same format. We've got a decimal, a percent, and a fraction. 
if written as fractions, they need to have the same denominator. Two tenths, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 10 and get 20 hundredths. 35%, we just remove this percent sign and write it over 100. For 8 twentieths, we multiply by 5 and get 40 hundredths. Now we can easily compare them because they are all fractions and they all have the same denominator. 20 hundredths, 35 hundredths, then 40 hundredths would be in order from least to greatest. We know because the 8 twentieths were the large and that's 40 hundredths that he sold more large pizzas. Some fraction and decimal conversions are used quite often. There's a lot of engineers and mathematicians that just memorize them. Memorizing them can be very useful. We can remember that a half is 0.5. We can even say it's 50 hundredths, can't we? And one third is 0.33, and it's got a bar over the top. If the digits of the decimal repeat, we write a bar over the digits that repeat, and this three keeps repeating, so there's a bar. I'm going to talk about this in a second. One fourth is 25 hundredths. One fifth could be 20 hundredths or two tenths. One eighth is 125 thousandths, and one tenth can be written as 10 hundredths or one tenth, their equivalent. Knowing a unit fraction as a decimal, we can use multiplication to find other fraction to decimal equivalencies. So these are all unit fractions because they all have a one as a numerator. So that's a unit fraction, right? So if one eighth is 0 0.125, well, then three eighths would be three times that. We could very easily find it. So let's talk about this bar over these decimal digits. So if the digits of a decimal repeat, we write a bar over all the digits that repeat. For two sevenths, we do how many times can seven fit into two? And I got this very long quotient that actually would keep on going because in the quotient, I got a two, eight, five, seven, one, four, and then as I kept dividing and adding more zeros to keep dividing, I got two, eight, five, seven, one, four again. And if I went down the board and kept dividing, I would get two, eight, five, seven, one, four again, and again, and again. So these digits repeat, these six digits just keep repeating. So we don't need to write these. We just write that two sevenths is 0 0.285714 with a bar over the top to show that these are repeating. Now, as a percentage, we can just round it to a couple of decimal places and say it's approximately, so we're using an approximate symbol, 28 and 57 hundred percent. So looking ahead to algebra, there's decimal, decimal numbers that end and they're called terminating decimals. Like we know one fourth is 0 0.25. That's it. That's the end. It's just 25 hundredths. So that's a terminating decimal. And then there's decimals that keep repeating. Those are repeating decimals. Then there's decimals that don't end. Those are called non-terminating decimals. And that would be like pi, 3.14. But it keeps going on and on and on with many digits. So we just say 3.14 to work with it. And we use an approximation symbol. And we'll learn about pi in seventh grade. There's quite a few fractions that if we try to turn them into a decimal and we use long division, we're going to have this bar over the repeating digits. For one ninth, we get a repeating one over and over and over again. So we can just say it's 0 0.11 and write a bar over the top. And then we have to use an approximation symbol as 11%. For 5 eighteenths, we have a 0 0.2 but then the sevens repeat. So we only have the bar over the sevens because those are the digits that are repeating. We can say it's approximately 27 and 7 tenths percent. For 1 11th, the 0 and 9 keep repeating over and over again, 0, 9, 0, 9, 0, 9. So we can just write the 0, 9 with a bar over the top as a decimal and say it's approximately 9%. It's not exact. It's not equal because we're ignoring all those other zeros and nines. So we just say it's approximately 9%. So though this isn't really part of the lesson, it's probably the question I get asked the most, what happens if I want to keep dividing? We just add a decimal point and more zeros and keep dividing. And if it repeats, 
We'll put a bar over the top of the ones that are repeating. So now we're finished with this lesson. We're gonna be moving on to 8.3, and this one's broken into four parts, and it's about solving percent problems. We're gonna be modeling a percent problem next. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you'll join me for next time. Bye.